Hey friends, it's Brian. It's time for another HVAC video. So today we're gonna work on hooking up the line sets. Um, I'm really excited about that. If I could get my hands on some duckboard or if I'd have bought it last week, um, I would actually go ahead and finish installing the air conditioning unit today. But it, as it is, it doesn't look like I'll be able to get that till Tuesday and it'll probably be late next week before I have a chance to mess with it. I really need like a day where I don't have anything else going on to do ductwork or gami. That's just me, so whatever. Hey, let's, let's go look at what we're up to. So we need to run, we need to extend the line set from there to there. It's about 19 inches, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna braze on 24 inches of copper because that gives me some working room. And um, anyway, that's what we're gonna do right now. So it's really hard to buy just a few feet of line set. So I ended up, the, the least expensive way for me to get my hands on some 5 8 tubing what, and insulation was to actually buy a 10 foot line set kit, which came with some wiring. Um, does not look like it is shielded, but whatever. Uh, it came with some corrugated hose, which I personally think is worthless. Um, and I don't know what the hell they think this stuff is. Um, so anyway, this is the prize. This is what we bought it for. Let's get busy. So this was about $90 on Amazon and it quite literally was the least expensive way for me to get my hands on this and get it here in a reasonable amount of time. eBay didn't have anything cheaper. Um, and I, it really, it was kind of surprising. Um, I'll be right back. Now, the reality is I'm probably not gonna use the tape measures that came, or I'm sorry, I'm probably not gonna use the insulation that came with this. I'm really after the line set. So what I'm gonna do is start by straightening it out gently. And then I'm gonna separate it. So the, these really are decent line sets. Um, I like the fact that they join them together, but I don't need them joined together right now. I need them separated. So, I'm gonna separate them. And there's really no nice way to get this stuff. So I'm just gonna score it and open it up. Ouch. Yeah, I gave myself a nice little cut there. Um, shit happens. It'll stop bleeding eventually. I'll be right back. So razor blade cuts tend to bleed for a while, so I'm gonna be fighting a little bit of seepage for a few minutes. In the meanwhile, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this. All right. Be back in a minute. Now, as an added bonus, I have factory flares that I get to use. So I really, this should go pretty easily. Um, the factory flares probably are better quality than anything I can do. So I'm gonna measure out 24 inches. and then I'm gonna cut it with my, my cutter. Now, I'm having issues here, so I'm gonna move my uh, working arrangements up, oh, and I just popped the, it had stopped bleeding, and when I reached for that, it, it started bleeding again. So let me, let me take a break and let this actually plot up. All right, so now that I've had some time for my um, thumb to quit bleeding, I'm gonna come back here and use my yellow jacket uh, tubing cutter to go ahead and just 
cut this. And you don't want to crank down on this. It'll it'll do the work by itself. And you'll get a nice cut there. So we're going to go ahead and do the 5 8 tubing. Okay, so let me uh, regroup here and get this tubing out of the way. So the next thing that needs to happen is you need to deburr the inside of the pipe. What you don't want is anything that can catch the refrigerant or cause an obstruction because it will cost you. And when you do this, you want to do it in a way that any shavings fall out. Phone call, be right back. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is, like I said, I gotta deburr these. Apparently I can't see or coordinate very well today, but at any rate, we wanna take all the sharp edges out and take care to bang them and get all the little pieces out because those little pieces are bad news all around. Well, it looks good enough. Um, let me get a piece of sandpaper. We'll do that while we're inside. It's nice in here. I forgot that I have some other tools, so I want to bring those in and show them to you. This is another deburr, and it's a little easier to use than the, the thing on the Yellowstone or Yellow Jacket. Uh, and, and it does external and internal burrs, which is actually a good thing. It's fast. Um, so I actually prefer this kind. And I think this does a better job. Um, because it, it has the little blades there that do their thing. I'm going to go ahead and deburr these fittings. No real reason to do this. Um, other than in the off chance that there was a burr that had gotten into one of those things. Now, it is important to rough up the inside. This will make it easier to do the brazing. You want to get any oxidation off there because oxidation isn't going to bond well to the brazing metal or filler metal as it's called. It really is welding. Um, it is not, I mean, and soldering is just low temperature welding. Technically welding is a fusion of metals, but you know, this may be a little, okay, yeah, we've got enough purchase here. So we want to get a nice clean. This one's going to be hard because I don't have anything small enough. So I'm just going to do it this way. And that gives me something close enough. I don't think I can get in. I don't need to get in here, but I do need to get in here, and I don't think I can do it. I don't... So it's just... Yeah, it just is what it is. Uh, and that's kind of the way these little ones are. So let's go outside and, and, and work a little bit and we'll get ready. So this is pretty straightforward. This is 7 8 tubing. And we're gonna adapt it down to the 5 8 that this system actually requires. It's not ideal, but it'll work just fine. So that's what the wire brush does. It cleans all that crap off. And I'm gonna get you guys off the... There we go. I 
I think this actually is easier for me from this side. So I want to look. It seems like I've got some junk in there. Let me go get my cutter. So I'm going to take an inch or so off this because I think there's some stuff inside the tip of this somehow. And nope, I was wrong, but it's not going to hurt anything. So We're just gonna rough fit this stuff. So this is not matching up 100%. There it goes. So that side does. And then we want a deeper both of these. Now in this case, we're gonna have to fish this stuff out. And that's the best we're gonna be able to do. But we're gonna go ahead and physically assemble this on both of them. So, we're almost there, but let's go up in the attic. Almost forgot, I need to take the caps out of the ends of these lines, so I've done that. So, what's up in the attic, you ask? Well, good question. How about a canister of nitrogen, or a tank of nitrogen, and some hose? Because we want to, um, <clears throat> we want to blow nitrogen through here. in order to keep oxides from forming inside when we're brazing. Copper is fairly reactive, so when you heat it up, it's gonna oxidize. It doesn't need to be anything magical, but it should be something sacrificial. So I'm gonna cut that off. I won't reuse the piece with the tape on it. Now I'm gonna adjust my flow and really, so it should be about four CFM, but I'm actually gonna set it higher. And it really, it's not gonna be right with it not, um, so I need to make sure all that's right, but this needs to be vertical to get a good read on it. So let me go get a wrench so I can adjust it. There we go. So now let's get it adjusted. All right. And we have plenty of nitrogen. So I'm gonna turn this off. I'll turn it on before I actually start brazing. I gotta get set up. All right, folks, so I've got my oxyacetylene portable rig, it's a uniweld, and this is where I'm gonna set up to do my brazing. So let me get the camera positioned, and then we're gonna get busy with it. 
I think that's good enough. Now, when I did this last time, seven years ago, I was using some material that had no silver in it, and it was, quite frankly, a pain in the ass to work with. So this time, I bought some silver solder. I bought it locally from Big Tech's Welding Supply for about $7 a stick, and I thought that was a fair enough price. So we're going to get all set up here. And we'll see how many sticks this takes. Yeah, so that, that feels right. I don't think it's gonna take very many. These aren't big. None of this stuff's big. Um, so the first thing I need to do is tune my uh, cylinders. So that's my oxygen, and there's my acetylene. So let's see what this does. All right, so my oxygen and acetylene is good. So now we are ready for business. Should be good right there. And this flows so much better. Oh, yeah, you know what? Forgot to turn on my nitrogen. Let me go do that. Boy, I feel stupid. All right, so it's, it's flowing. Let's see if we, oh, that's still pretty warm. You know what, it just is what it is. So I'm gonna go back to what we were doing. That looks pretty good. Oh, I guess I should move it over if we're gonna do this right. So let me go move it to the other tube and then we'll get busy with it. Okay, so we are ready to go. We've got the nitrogen flowing from upstairs.
I'm gonna walk around to the other side and grab that. Not what I would call especially pretty, but I think it will do the trick. All right. So I think we're good there. So we can turn this off. And then I'm gonna turn off my oxygen and acetylene. I'm gonna let that cool off naturally. There's no reason not to. Had a little oil that cooked off in there. I haven't even used one rod. So uh, that's it for out here. All right, before we go any further, I'm gonna go ahead and get these connected on the outside here. So that involves taking this little service cover off. Honestly, I don't know what it does, but we're gonna pop it off, no big deal. Put the screws in it. That's an easy way to keep them from getting lost. Now I need uh, a wrench to get this loose, so let me go get that. So we're gonna start with the liquid line, and then we'll do the suction line. And these are just not on here very tight. Really nice nuts. Um, I don't need them though. Now the reason I say I don't need them, actually I'm gonna leave that one on until I'm exactly ready to put this on. But the reason I don't need them is I have flares that came with the nuts. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend the line to make this, this turn. So let me reposition the camera. So I very deliberately left extra line here. I want, I want there to be more line than I need. And the 3 8 I can just gently bend by hand. So that gets us in the neighborhood where we need to be. Okay, so now that we've got this essentially where it needs to be, we're gonna rough fit it. We'll take that brass nut off. So that looks right to me. Now it needs some nylog. Now, there's a couple ways to apply this. And in this case, I don't, I'm not gonna apply it upside down. So I'm just gonna slop it on this fitting here and then spread it around with my finger. And that's good enough. All right, let me go uh, check the spec on this and I'll be right back. So it's important when you're doing these to do it right. Oh, and that's the wrong tool. Let me go get the torque wrench. I'll need this, but not right now. I want the torque wrench. Okay, so I have a yellow jacket torque wrench here. We're gonna need three eighths, which I think is this one. Nope, it's the next one up.
that's bizarre. It doesn't have the 21 in here. Well, that's real. I guess we won't use a torque wrench then. So it calls for 20, uh, it's, it's only 20 um, foot pounds. Of, so we're just gonna, we're gonna call that 20 foot pounds. Hmm. Now what's five eighths? Five eighths is 27 and we have that one. So we'll use this one. And this one calls for 34. And this is a nice, nice tool. So we are currently set for 25. So we'll unlock it and we'll just zero, one, two, three, four. All right, it actually calls for 33.8, but I'm gonna take it to 34. If it can handle one, it can handle the other. Now, this thicker tubing is gonna be a little more challenging uh, to handle. So, yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Push that back up out of the way. I'm pretty sure, yeah, five eighths. Half of five eighths. I don't use these on a daily basis, so, you know, forgive me if I seem rusty, because this isn't what I do for a living. So this is quarter three-eighths, five-eighths side. the release on this thing. There it goes. And I don't like that. So I want to bring it up a little bit. Uh, hopefully I'm not going to end up redoing this. I, I don't I don't like that at all. It, it looks it looks um, not great. So I'm actually going to bend it by hand. which unfortunately is something I probably should have just done from the get-go. That's okay, but to me that looks a little crimped. I think it'll be okay. I need to bring this back a little bit. And then again, now that we're ready, we'll take that off. And then we'll slide this nut back in order to get an idea how our fit is. I feel like that's crimped at this point. Uh, I don't like it. Let me think about it. So, in my opinion, this is definitely crimped. I'm gonna remove it. So I'm gonna go get my brazing rig, turn on the gas, and I'm gonna pull this pipe off here. Uh, 
I think what really needs to happen is this needs to be replaced. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll salvage this piece here. There's nothing wrong with it on this end. Um, so it, that can go upstairs and get used. Um, worst case, I'll just make a new flare on the end of it. I mean, I do have the flaring tool. I just was trying to get out of doing a flare if I could avoid it. Um, Yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at. Let me go get some tools and I'll be back. And we're not going to use the bending tool. Apparently it doesn't like this thin wall copper stuff. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. So it's kind of fascinating. This is what they include with it, but this connection here is not even remotely going to um, fit onto any. I don't know what the hell this is for. It won't fit onto anything. It'll fit on the outside of that, but that isn't going to cut it. I do have one of these, though. So I think I could actually salvage this. So we'll come back far enough to get out of that crimp area. And then we'll come down here. So that's that's thoroughly crimped. And that ain't gonna cut it. We're not gonna do that. That does not meet my standards of workmanship. And I'm really disappointed that that yellow jacket cutter did that. I mean, that's, that's the whole point of owning a tool like that is that you don't do shit like that. So we're not far enough down. having a little bit of difficulty with this tubing so we're gonna have to come way down and that may rule this tubing out all right so let's see if we can even get this to the point where it would work And that would be no. It is just a little bit too short. So let's think this through. And again, this is the thing that's weird is like, this seems to go out. No, it doesn't even fit that. I don't know what the hell it's for. I really don't. To me, this is a mistake. If you can't, they've over expanded it. And it's just so close. So the right thing to do is to unbraze it here and braze in a new piece. So that's what we're gonna do. Let me go get my brazing rig so I can take this apart. All right, so I'm not wearing my suit and get up at the moment because it's 100 degrees out and I'm already hot and irritated. So it'll be okay. The rig is still adjusted from earlier today. So settling, a little bit of oxygen. I got my pliers pre-positioned. And we're just gonna, nice reducing flame. So we're gonna bring this up to temperature. Nitrogen is flowing from inside the house already. And that was not the answer I was looking for. <sighs> so 
sometimes things just don't go so well and that's an example of one of them there we go that's what I was looking for so shut that off turn off my acetylene turn off my oxygen So I'm gonna give that some time to cool off. I need to go get a tape measure and figure out what my replacement size is. Uh, and I'll be right back. So it's not just my imagination. This tubing is extremely brittle. Uh, I was gonna try and use the other end and it kinked on me when I tried to unroll it, which is extremely frustrating. So. go ahead and deburr it and then figure out how far this needs to go and we probably will recycle this piece because it is good and we're having trouble with this tubing so let me come over to the other side and fit this up <clears throat> uh, I need my brush let me go get my wire brush all right That's good enough. This is the side we've deburred, so we'll there we go. And then So in order to fit this up, we're gonna take this all the way down. Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna do this differently. My spidey sense says this is just fine if we cut off this funky size fitting at the end. So that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna try and do. No, that's not what we're going to do because they didn't leave enough material to work with. And that's what I should have done in the first place. Is bent it by hand just a little bit at a time. I think that's the right place for it. So I'm gonna take this off. You wanna be really gentle with this tubing because it is extremely easy to kink or dent. It's just a poor quality alloy. You know, that's the problem with China is they'll, they'd screw their mother if there was 10 cents involved. China has the ability to regulate poor quality exports, but they don't care because for them it's all about making money. Normally, Vivor is a pretty good brand, but clearly some of their vendors cut corners. And I think Vivor is just a big reseller. So, let's fit that. Oh, let's finish dressing this up. All right. All copper is always an alloy. It's just a question of what's the alloy made of, and clearly they're using something cheaper.
don't think that's right, so. There we go. That's all the way in. Uh, apparently we don't need to be, apparently it's, it'll slide all the way inside that pipe. We don't need that. And that's, it's an okay practice. That's what the factory does for their joints. They just drill a hole and, and braze the tubing together. So at this point, we're ready to braise. So we're gonna start in this side here. This is not a commercial work site, so OSHA does not apply to the activities that I'm engaged in before anybody makes a comment about it. Got a nice reducing flame there. I'm gonna use a new, actually I'm not. I'm gonna use this same piece of material that I've been using so I can see just how long it'll last. I'm cheap. So let's go ahead and we'll start by heating the fitting a little bit and then we'll go to the insert. Get this nice and warmed up. We're going to draw this in by heating the outside of the coupling. This material is cheap compared to refrigerant, so we want to make sure we have a nice bond. We're flowing about 8 to 10 CFMs of nitrogen because it's a thicker pipe. All right, and I'm going to turn that off, come around to the other side. So this is a lot closer than I prefer to work, but it will be just fine. We're gonna start with the X or the upper. That looks pretty good. These gloves absolutely suck.
got a lot less thermal mass here, so it doesn't take as much to heat this up. So we're coming up to a nice cherry red here pretty quickly. And this inner tubing is really thin. That's a little globby, so we'll give it some heat to spread that out. That looks good, or at least it looks good for my skill level. There it goes, I can see it wicking in. That's what we wanna see. We wanna see a nice cherry red where it wicks the brazing compound in. There it goes. Took that in very nicely. So let me bring this one back up to that temperature. see what I'm doing. Honestly, I think this needs... Here we go, we're coming to liquidity. There we go, that's, the, that's what we want to see. Turn my oxygen and my acetylene off. I don't think I had a whole lot of oxygen flowing there, but that's all right. And I'm gonna start picking up my tools up here. I need to get my spray bottle and cool all this off. So I'll be right back. So there was a rag that was closer. I'm still flowing nitrogen. I'm gonna let this cool off while I uh, pick up tools and put stuff away. I'll be right back. All right, so same program as before, basically. We wanna undo this nut. That's what we're looking for. <clears throat> and then 
and we're just going to put some nylog on here. It's okay if it gets inside. It is PoE oil. It's just really thick. Get this nice and lined up. And then because we have the right wrench, we'll use it. That gives us a nice secure fitting. The next thing we'll be doing is flowing nitrogen through here, but we're not gonna do that right this second. Okay, so first things first, we've gotta get the overflow drip pan into place before we go any further with this project because access is going to get difficult to put it nicely. So let's go ahead and slide this in. That is by no means a permanent install. It's just a rough placement. So we're actually gonna slide it all the way back out of the way. Um, I've decided that I am gonna hook the unit up and I'm probably gonna make a cardboard plenum until I can get around to making a duckboard one. House is insulated. I really don't care if it leaks a little bit. Um, I am sick of not having central air conditioning and I'm sick of being hot upstairs in my house. So, this is a difficult environment to work in. I did discover that the factory stubs will go right onto the outside of 3 8 tubing, so that's kind of good. I also have some 3 8 long elbows. Let me move the camera in. <clears throat> So I got these 3 8 long elbows, and then I've got some 7 8 long elbows, and I'm going to make the most of them because I've got to come up and over to get to this. And one of my ideas is I found that this, oh, uh, where'd it go? This, what this does fit is the outside of a reducer almost perfectly. So I feel like I could do this as an option. Um, this still involves, I mean, let's just go ahead and try it. What the hell? I swear these are different sizes. They are. 7 8 and 7 16 I wonder. No, it's not. You know, we, we need to do this anyway. This coil should be pressurized. If it's not, I'm going to be pissed. So we just gotta wait for the pressure to bleed off out of the coil. This is going to wind up being about right here. That's it's that's that's where this should live. So uh, go ahead and mark that here. That that's where that braze needs to be, and then we can push this buck back out of the way. It's amazing how much pressure that coil was under. There it goes. It may still pop. There you go. Not at all an uncommon situation. Good to know that it held pressure from China. I mean, I have no illusions this was made anywhere else. It's a it's a private label Medea unit. Don't worry, everything else is made in Mexico or some other cheap place. Hardly anybody makes anything in the United States anymore. There might be a couple companies that are still making stuff in the US, but 
I wouldn't hold my breath over it. So one of our options is this. And we'll just physically test fit this. And in my opinion, this could work, but man, that's an awful lot. I mean, it would just be a lot better if we did this and came down. Uh, and I don't think, I think there's another one somewhere. Let me go see if I can find it. I'll be right back. So I have one that I didn't bend, and so what I could do is come off of it like this, and then this, and I think that makes more sense to me. So, let's find the cutters and see if we can do exactly that. So, of course, I'm going to come up just a little bit more. And... So then we come into this like this, we come into this like this, and maybe one more there. I mean, where does that put us? So I think that's workable. I really do. I think we could come out about this far. What did we say this was? Yeah, you know, this 3-8 stuff solders really, really fast. So I think that'll be okay. That one was a little harder than I expected, but we got through it. Can't see them, but I can feel them. I can feel the little pieces. that gets us a turn it makes us a nice clean loop so we'll go ahead and mark this one as well We need to be outside of that, anything we do. And really, well, I thought I brought my tape measure up here. Oh, I did, it's over there. Ouch. Well, I wondered where that was. Underfoot wasn't the answer I wanted though.
It's just about a foot. So I think that's where that one needs to go. Really would like to see that done differently, but it is what it is. So I think that'll work. I think this can be made to work. So it's probably not going to be very pretty here in the rough end state, but that will connect. The liquid line is under constant pressure, so it'll be just fine. It's away from there. That's, that's what I want to see. So I think at that point, I'm ready to flow nitrogen and do some brazing. So let me go get my nitrogen set up outside. All right, so let's get the show on the road. We got the nitrogen hooked up. Uh, I have my spray bottle. I have a rag to contain how far the heat goes. And I've got an aluminum plate as a fire block. And I expect this to go pretty quickly. Hopefully we won't catch anything on fire. Nothing like using a torch and a spray foam insulated house. All right, definitely got that cherry red. We're gonna bring this one up real quick. Okay, that's not my cleanest brazing. I'm kind of globbing it on there, but it's gonna work. Now, my next trick is going to come off the unit because I don't want the heat near that. So these can be well are brazed just the way they are. 
So we're actually going to set it up like this and braise it. And we're going to go ahead and do both of them at once. I want to do this one and then I'll flip it over. So I'm probably going to need my gloves for this one. All right, that looks really good. And that's gonna be a little bit too hot to touch right now, so we're gonna flip it with a pair of pliers and see if we can get it into a position that is conducive to what we need to do. That's gonna put it over here in this corner. I'm sorry it's not the best for visuals, but this is a functional activity as much as it is anything else. So that's probably as good as it's going to get right there. That looks really nice. And then we'll just give it a few seconds to cool off and then we're gonna help it out. And I realize we're not flowing nitrogen through that. It'll be okay, I promise. So we need to let this cool off. We're gonna give that a second. Now, the only piece that didn't get nitrogen was this, and yeah, that's a little lumpy looking. This has nitrogen flowing through it, and we're actually going to do this side first. Okay. And I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to spin this around and place it. Because the alignment is pretty important. So we need to get it roughly in the right spot. So next what we're going to do is we're going to make sure... that's on there correctly. We'll bring this back here as a heat shield, add some water to it. Okay, so we're gonna pop this one real quick. Heat the join up. All right, that looks really good. And I'm going to go ahead and So that looks really good, so let's cool it off. Uh, it's not the prettiest brazing I've ever participated in my life, but it will 
it will do the job. So let me go and turn off the nitrogen and move it to the other line. Uh, we're not quite ready to flow nitrogen on the other line. We gotta get all that set up and plumbed. But this is pretty much done. Um, still a little warm. So let me go get that turned off. I'll be right back. Okay, so we have, this one is completed. Next, we gotta work on the other one. We're gonna try and keep this in the original size because we have fittings for it. We don't have fittings for the other sizes. So let me politely move that. There's that. Where the hell am I cut? Oh, there they are. I don't know how far this is gonna get us. We're just gonna see. So let's go ahead and I don't have high hopes for this, but I think it'll still work. Let's uh, this might look shiny, but it's actually seven year old copper, so. That's a little less than round. Worst case, we'll just wind up with a big piece of five eighths on here, and that'll be that. And that might be what happens. this is just half inch pipe and yeah that thought has occurred to me too now you'll notice that I am not gonna outer deburr or inner deburr this because I don't want to chase chips in there. All right. That's enough. So the next thing we need to do is this. It's 
not quite a 90 degree bend, but it's pretty close and it's gonna get us where we wanna go. Yep, that's still doable. I don't think this is gonna work to be honest, but I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a good shot. Okay, so if we come up like this, that ain't gonna fly. Let me go see what I got downstairs. I might have some more 5 eighths. So I'm not an HVAC tech, but if I was, I might not be that bad. So here is the material that came out of the old unit. Got a little bit of stuff going on down here, so we're just gonna cut this off. And this is 7 8 the hell? It's got some beautiful curves built, bent into it already, so if I can just salvage it. Um, it's also got some oil in it. That's gonna smoke off when we do this, so it just is what it is. I'd rather have oil than any number of things. There we go. So I think this can be made to work. So let's see if we can cut this off kind of cleanly. And we'll take salvage for, for the win. Now, don't get me wrong, I would like to have fewer turns in this, but if I'm gonna have turns, I'd rather have them in seven eighths, which is uh, larger than what this system calls for. So there we go. So that is looking pretty sharp there. Let me get this all cleaned up. So we're removing copper oxide. That's what the tarnish is. There we go. Clean this up again. So I think this is actually gonna work really well and these factory bends are about as perfect as they come. I will give Goodman that. So.
that's what that's going to look like. It will make it right next to impossible to get this coil out, but shouldn't have to take coil out anyway. So what I do want to do, there ain't no nice way to do this. So I want to put this together first. Um, So in order to do this, again, I don't want heat next to the unit. And this is the easiest way to keep it away. So this will let me bring this out here and get this all nice and lined up. At which point I can come in here and braise this. So a little fire block there. Let me go start the nitrogen, I'll be back. Okay. So the battery on my microphone is giving up the ghost, but I think it'll make it through this. So I'm going to start here on the difficult one. having some hand issues with my carpal tunnel so that's why my hand is twitching uh, we're gonna give that some time to cool off but that looks like a nice braise wasn't really anticipating that So let me go switch microphones and give that some time to cool off and give me a moment of rest. All right, so we are back at it. And the good news is we don't have a whole lot left. I do need to
push that back and set this. This looks really good. Uh, that looks a little sketchy. Feels solid, but it looks sketchy. So, in fact, this is a golden opportunity. I'd like to see a little more down here and a little more there. So I'm gonna heat it back up and hit it again. I've got the nitrogen flowing. Okay, so that looks better. Let's turn that off. Yeah, it's still a little warm. Um, so all the issues are taken care of. Uh, you know, I wouldn't, I'd give it a seven in terms of braze quality. Hey, and it's still pretty warm. What do you know, acetylene burns hot. So let me uh, let this cool off because I need to position it exactly before I weld those or braze those. So we'll take another break, turn off the nitrogen, I'll be back. All right, friends, we are there. Now we are flowing nitrogen. So I want to not burn anything, so I'm going to actually stick some stuff under there. And I brought a new wet rag up. It's a little tight. A little tight. So let's let's get it. Do it to it.
Now remember, there's oil in this system, so we're going to burn that off as we do this. So the smoke is nothing to be alarmed at as long as it stays in its spot. We're getting there. So it's a nice cherry red at this point. I think we're good. So, maybe not the prettiest line set, but it's done. So, one of the things really interesting is they use the same valves on both ends, so I've got service valves up here at the coil. Honestly, that's just bizarre to me. Um, but, whatever. Let me go turn the nitrogen off and bring it in, because I'm running that tank really low. And I'll take some scrap with me when I go down there. Okay, so... 
those things are done. And for our next trick, let's see, those can go out there. I need a glove. Let me go get one. So, first things first, let's put some Nylog Blue on both connections. All right, so we'll rub this in. And that's what we needed the glove for. And now we're gonna work on actually getting a good connection. So I thought I had this in here. I'm just so over it with different size flare nuts and <clears throat> all right I think that's good or rather it's good enough. So now I'm gonna fasten this down. Um, I'm actually gonna push that back up against there because I'm gonna insulate that. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna push that down. I'm gonna leave that free because it's pushing itself down. And then this can come out here. There's, there's plenty of room there. You know, the only thing we have left to do at this point is to put um, a gauge on it and pull a complete vacuum and fascinatingly enough it, there's service valves up here which is just bizarre I wouldn't expect to see many split service valves in, on the air handler my guess is this is just a cost saving measure um, but the next thing we need to do is pull a uh, sub 500 micron vacuum and let it hold for a while because I don't have the equipment to, to pressurize the system to 400 PSI with nitrogen. But nature abhors a vacuum, so a solid vacuum will do just nicely. And, um, you know, I know there's probably people out there that could do a lot better job on the brazing, but you know what, this is what I can do and I think it's good enough. It worked last time. Um, and uh, we're getting close but we're not there today, um, which is unfortunate because I would really like to have this unit going, but this, this needs to be plumbed and uh, we got some wiring to do still for the thermostat. I got to hook the thermostat up on both ends and, you know, it's not that big of a deal. So, you know, Nice little plugs, um, but we gotta we gotta get this connected and plumbed over to there, and um, you know, it just is what it is. This is this is how this goes, one step at a time, um, and you know, now the line set is installed and connected. Uh, I need to build, so I need to wire the communication and power between inside and outside. I need to wire the thermostat, finish sealing the housing, install the heat strip kit, build the takeoff adapter plenum to my distribution plenum, um, and uh, test the vacuum and put the filter in and that's it. And then I wanna seal up all these little 
cracks and crevices and shit where it can pull or push air in and out. Um, that's just good workmanship in my opinion. And I'll go ahead and seal all this crap up, but once I get it together, um, and I'll pay the price if I ever have to take it apart. So that's it. It's a long video today, but I got a lot done. Uh, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed this and find it inspirational and informational. You know, if you're going to install one of these yourself, at least know kind of what you're doing. And if you don't, call a professional, find a professional. Um, there's a lot of hacks out there in the HVAC business. Uh, and I, I'm sure that the quote professionals will throw darts at me and I could care less. Um, I inspect enough of their stuff and see shit wrong with it all the time. So not real worried. Um, at any rate, that's it for today's video.